स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया हेलो एवरीबॉडी वेलकम बैक टू दिस नेक्स्ट मॉड्यूल ऑफ प्रोसेशन ऑंकोलॉजी कोर्स वी विल बी गोइंग अहेड विद दिस मॉड्यूल द कैंसर डिटेक्शन मेथड्स so till now we have really seen uh, we have got an idea about about the whole basics of cancer biology we really went about what about tumor suppressor genes then what are oncogenes then what are the different uh, hallmarks of cancer and what are the molecular mechanisms of carcinogenesis so till now we've got we got slowly introduced into all the co concepts of uh, oncology molecular oncology all their basics now wh what exactly is uh, cancer detection how do you detect a tumor mass or uh, a to or a tumor tumor inside what are the different methods available before we go at this whole module we have i have uh, structured into two sessions in the first section we will be really talking about the uh, basically the screening strategies what uh, what exactly why do you have to screen for a cancer and what are the different uh, how does the governments adapt their different policies you know it's not necessary like you know first example cancer is like an overall disease where it's not only for specific to one country it is like for throughout right how do the low income group comp uh, or low and the middle income group countries how do they uh, go about with their ca cancer screening policies and how do the rich countries so uh, are and how, what are all the different population based screening for this today's uh, session so basic terminologies of with to expect to cancer screening i will be giving up now as i said you know this is your uh, why do we have to screen for cancer now the uh, worldwide uh, ca cancer burden is very much likely to approach to 27 million by 22 2040 they are expected to be 27 million new cancer cases which is up from 18.1 million cancer cases which was estimated in 2018 this and here the major the uh, the low income group company, uh, countries are uh, really and all this particular uh, regions you know they are all uh, playing a very big uh, now Uh, role in this increasing the numbers are uh. why why is this particular high interest first the uh, population growth aging and changes in the prevalence of uh, prevalence of risk factors they all can tribute to this increasing in burden burden of cancer um now who it's like now it is like it has to uh, has uh, says that we have to hasten uh, efforts to ensure healthy lives and there is there is a promote for a well being that is like you have to go for screening or preventive go for vaccinations for example for uh, places uh, for uh, cancers like cervical cancer or hpv vaccination by the year, end of the year 2020 the uh, who the in the world health assembly that uh, that it has to make all in initiatives that will reduce the number of premature de uh, de uh, deaths of cancer by 1/3 so for first here this is the uh, estimated uh, uh, age uh, standard were mortality rates in 2020 where in all uh, cancers and in all uh, when you take across all both sexes males and females and in uh, all uh, and at all uh, across all ages it's like you know the cancer incidence is like the estimated number of uh, in india for the year 2022 was found to be for this much such a high number that is approximately 100 per every 1 lakh so one in per, so there is in india there is every chance that one in nine people are likely to develop uh, cancer in their lifetime so if you see here you know the lung and the breast cancers are the leading uh, states of cancer in males and females respectively so among the pediatric cancers you know you have the leuke lymphoid le leukemia uh, for uh, which is in the lead so if you see in the males and females see if you can really see what are the different like the lung Uh, the oral the prostate the stomach esophagus larynx the liver this is all in the they are all the cause of cancer deaths whereas in females you have the lead as per the breast the cervix then the, you have the ovary and even the lung which is also coming much much leading also which is much higher getting close to in this particular bar this is the way how the statistics go about in in india so now how do you can you prevent this particular alarming rise in numbers now we come to uh, let's say introduce another term called the cancer screening 
it refers to a routine periodic testing for signs of cancers, uh, cancer among individuals who have no symptoms per, per se. But uh, of course, people go even if they find a lump or an all, they go for, uh, they go to the uh, tertiary or the primary healthcare centers. Mm, so, in the co context of the cancer screening, the goal of this, it is like uh, secondary prevention, like can you improve the outcome of the disease if a person, if he is diagnosed early, that is like you are shifting the stage of diagnosis to, uh, to one that is less advanced and you detect the cancer in its early stages. Relative, uh, suppose if you go for a cancer screening in the late stages, maybe the, it is a very tough to further cure. This screening uh, modality is, you know, it has only a true benefit when it, it is like it should be not within your uh, very high end, high end uh, screening only, not only in a perfect hospital or it should go, it should be your screening modality should be reaching the general population. So, if you can really reduce the number of deaths in this particular uh, uh, scenarios, it will be a very good success. Now. Can you detect cancer? What is what is cancer screening? Basically, it is a sorting process. The screen is, you know, the people are usually, they are positive for example, cervical cancer or they are positive for, they are like uh, negative for this particular cancer. Whatever the particular test you find. So, the negative test finds nothing suspicious. You do not have cancer. It does not require any medical uh, intervention. For, for example, uh, uh, you have a mammogram. For If it is a lady is negative for mammogram uh, uh, after an age of 40 or 45 plus, then come back after 2 years for again and another mammogram. It is nothing to worry about. Whereas, a positive test, if it shows something, it is suspicious for cancer with unknown significance regarding it requires additional Medi medi medical attention, they find a lump or maybe if they find any lymph node uh, uh, size increase or anything, it has to be, it has to be monitored. And another very interesting term here is active surveillance, where watchful waiting, it is like you schedule a minimally or a non-invasive testing to monitor for clinically important changes. So, now again uh, suppose if there is a tumor or uh, suppose uh, there, there is an uh, if you have if you want to resect an abnormality it is also called and uh, and this can be uh, for example a tumor lump is, uh, is surgically resected and it can be considered for diagnostic. So, maybe you take a di biopsy or fine needle biopsy, fine needle aspiration cytology rather than treatment it, it has to be definitely confirmed. So, main responsibility of any cancer screening program is to give a very conclusive or a confirmed uh, diagnostic if it is a positive or a negative test. This is a simple algorithm of how the screening goes. So, you just it is like just taken population of for example, a cervical cancer screening, you go to a community and you say that you want to do, how do you go? It is not, they do not say it seem anything abnormal. So, just they seem apparently healthy individuals. This is like you could conduct for example, you go for an HPV testing or a pap smear, then either it is an abnormal, it is negative or it is like a negative test or it will be normal, it is negative, negative test, it is normal, nothing to worry, just go back home. But whereas if it is something you find any uh, abnormal uh, in your, for example, if it is an HPV positive, you go for the diagnostic test, further more set of diagnostics uh, uh, tests, then if they have a disease, so simple they give, they go for treatment, chemotherapy, radiotherapy, whatever uh, the treatment regimen goes in. And if still they do not have a disease or maybe it is just very much a, a lesion which is of uh, a benign in nature, just keep watching for that. Again, come more regularly for a particular screening procedure. Before we go into the further depths, you know, so which we I would like to cover here the different staging procedures. This is a very standard the TNM staging st system. This is a very standard terminology given where your T refers to the size and extent of the main tumor. In the wherever, so for example, the breast is a primary structure. The main tumor is usually called the primary tumor and refers to the number of the nearby nodes that have uh, have cancer. This is simple, that is a lymph nodes, nearby lymph nodes. M refers to the, can is the cancer metastase. The T, uh, again your T's, they are the clinician will give in the following name, the following terminology. Your Tx is the, the main tumor which cannot be measured. The T0, the main tumor which cannot be found. The T1, T2, T4 refers to the size 
and end out to the extent of the main tuber. The higher the number after the T, the larger the tumor or the more it has grown into the nearby tissue, simple. So, T is again may be further divided into detail, much more details such as T3A, T3B like that. And your regional uh, lymph nodes N, uh, where cancer in nearby lymph nodes where NX is like it cannot be measured. N0, there is no cancer in your nearby lymph nodes. N1, N2, N3 refer to the number and location of uh, lymph nodes that contain cancer. The higher the number after the, after the N, the more the where the cancers could have metastasized. As uh, the distance uh, metastasis is M. Mx where again your tumor metastasis cannot be measured. M0 we, we, uh, cancer has not spread to other parts of the body. Where this all this can usually this staging is done by a PET CT. Okay, all this methodology and all that I will discuss it in the next session. But before you know just to get this session we will uh, brush up on how to what are the term, uh, terminologies for uh, your uh, cancer screening or if you get a report or a PET CT report how do you interpret or talk about it. M1 is cancer is spread to other parts and something here again which we have is uh, your stages. What is this suppose they say it is stage 0. Uh, it is like uh, your abnormal cells are present but have not spread to the nearby tissue. It is also called carcinoma in C2 or CIS. Stage 1, 2 and 3 may be also be either you write it in Roman numbers or in the regular Arabic one where cancer is present the higher the number the larger the cancer tumor and more it has spread into the Near, nearby tissue and when I say stage 4 it is spread to the other parts. So, few more terms is in situ where abnormal cells are present but they have not spread into nearby tissue localized where cancer is limited to the place where it started uh, started with no sign but it has not but it has uh, and it has not spread that it, it did not spread it is a localized. So, regional for example the uh, cancer has spread only to its nearby lymph nodes or to uh, tissues or to organs. For example, uh, the dis again similarly distance but has spread to metastasized all over to distant parts of the body. So, there is uh, unknown, there is not uh, enough information uh, to figure out the stage of the cancer. One more simple screening methodology, it is like you know according to the uh, recommendations like the tumor size. First example, it is like uh, a tumor size is a, it is a very really, suppose you have a larger tumor size in your PET CT or in your uh, MRIs or in your CT scans and whatever you know. It is a, usually a variously, it is the first thing you define a defined biomarker. First biomarker, I will tell you what is exactly a definition of biomarker. It is like it is a variously of the uh, tumor, uh, it is like you talk about the tumor size, tumor diameter, tumor volume, tumor mass. There is a first defined biomarker for the efficacy of your therapeutics. You have the and uh, this tumor size also it should it could be very slight variation some based on your different contrast agents and different protocols they affect the precision of your measurement. So, every pro protocol it, it has to determine the tumor size also uh, it is it is also dependent on the tumor location. So, now just uh, recollect back you know it is like you know you have the four phases of cancer progression. Now, uh, so recollect back you know, so it is like uh, we have really discussed how the cancer grows right, right, how you how we said how a single cell differentiates to a cancer, cancerous cells and then how does this uh, cancer cells multiply further on to establish as neoplasia then a tumor and then metastasized, right. Now, uh, just very much in a lower grade of level of representation here is your four phases of cancer protection, uh, cancer progression. Now, here first in the stay phase A, it could be cancerous, it's absolutely patient is totally asymptomatic and it is not detectable with a regular screening technologies or screening uh, tools whatever available. Okay, when you come to phase B, still the cancer is present but the patient is still asymptomatic and it could be detected with screening. Now, coming to your phase C, you know, here the cancer present is symptomatic. The patient may express some kind of symptoms, for example, if it is lung, you know, in majority, uh, I mean, do not confuse with the uh, stage stages and the phases here where the stage 3 people are present present themselves especially in, in India because we do not uh, go for a low, low dose uh, CT scan 
for lung cancer screening. What, how do they present? They come with uh, cough and loss of weight and fever and all that and it is already by stage 3 and 4 only they go for the patients presence themselves here. The cancer uh, is here in this phase uh, C is asymptomatic and then you have the phase D where it is like cancer dead due to cancer. So here you are talking about uh, cancer is present and more, uh, more asymptomatic and not detectable by your any of your existing screening technologies for that particular cancer. So, for you have all this four cases. So, now only here because they come here into clinical attention because of the symptoms which they show here. Now, where are your exactly your screening methods or your detection methods, where are they coming? Here you just imagine a very fine line and here, so before the progression to the phase A to B or between B to C is only when your, your screening technologies or be it molecular method, methodologies or your imaging technologies or whatever, you know, they are only the very much intervening tools to help a clinician decide if the cancer can progress or is what exactly the decision for intervention has to be taken place. So, it can be uh, in, uh, so it is like it could be a slightly clinically advanced but it may not be detected by a regnal stage uh, procedure here. Now, this is a typical uh, genetic, uh, uh, genetic uh, uh, analytic framework for evaluating a, or screening test. So, for example, you have a target uh, population. So, now you need to have different questions here. The, does the uh, testing, suppose if I test for example for cervical cancer, if I do a HPV testing, remember how uh, I we mentioned that how HPV screening and uh, HPV uh, uh, viral presence, uh, the DNA presence uh, for, and the uh, cervical cancer. If you really re recollect a molecular uh, uh, basics, uh, basics in molecular biology of cancer, you would really know there how um, the, this particular viral infection is correlated to HPV cancer. So, for example, uh, suppose the, if I do a direct women, for example, if I say all the women uh, directly testing, do, does it reduce the, for this particular, does it reduce the mortality and the morbidity for cervical cancer? This is my number one question which I have to ask here. This is a very, so before I evaluate for a screening test. Yes, it has been very well proved. For example, with this case, your HPV testing. Yes, it, if I do for HPV testing for screening for cervical cancer, yes, it reduces morb morbidity and mortality. And then go for test accuracy. Do I have a test accuration? Is my testing accurate? For, or for example, a mammogram. Is it very accurate? Yes. Now, what is the target population and the clinical uncertainty? target population, yes, I take all this particular women. For example, if it is for breast or cervical or men for your lung and for, for whatever other uh, scenarios. And again, age is also very important factor. Now, uh, then the another very much important like have the target, target population uncertainty, then go ahead for testing. Di diagnosis, whether I give them a positive, if I, I find high viral load, does it correlate? Then we further refer for further other uh, uh, array of tests for that particular cancer scenario and then classification of your target condition. And then, uh, then uh, this is your, what is the impact on your management, I mean on our health outcomes. Can we communicate this particular uh, uh, decision uh, per, per se here? Then what is the, uh, so again, change in clinical decisions. So, are we going to treat them? Are we going to like, you know, counsel them? Of course, you are going to definitely treat them, but are you going to counsel them further or are, how do you go, go ahead with that? Then what are the treatment, what are the treatment strategies, all that regimens and all that. Then what is the again impact of intermediate uh, outcomes on your health outcomes. Then adverse events, what are this accept, uh, supposing if I have, am I going to have any other fine needle, other aspiration or whatever it is, do I have any, for example, if we go for a biopsy, what are the other adverse effects and what are the adverse effects of uh, all this. For evaluating a screening test, for example, this is the general, genetic analytic framework which uh, they, they have to uh, undergo to for, uh, uh, for uh, bringing this screening test which will uh, reduce the morbidity and mortality for that particular 
cancer. So this is how after the screening procedure is done. For example, you've screened 100 women or 100 men or whatever a general population, for example, 1000 for one particular test. How do you actually ascertain the disease status? If you have a true positive, then you have it is like which is only positive. When you compare it with your golden standard, then you have the true negative when you compare it with your golden standard. So your false positive, positives and then you have your false ne negatives as well. So you determine the sensitivity, how do, uh, often does the test correctly identify uh, the sensitive individuals with the disease. It should be very, it should be able to pick up all the positive uh, patients and then specificity. You have all these different formulas. How often does the test correctly identify individuals uh, who are uh, not with the disease? So, you have the different uh, screening uh, program evaluation uh, basis. So, you have the self direction, then you have the lead time basis, then you have your uh, over uh, time, you have the length time bias. What is uh, length weighted sampling? It leads to the detection of cancers through screening that is expected to have a better prognosis than those uh, that are not detected through screening. So, your length bias refers to the tendency of the screening procedure to detect slowly growing lesions more readily than your aggressive cancers. All this will be, I will be discussing further detail in this coming slides. So, now uh, it is like, uh, this is for example, your uh, your uh, lead time, for example, uh, it is a bias, it refers to the over overestimation of the survival time simply due to the backwards shift in your starting point for the measurement of survival as a result of early detection. Then it is like for example, uh, you do not uh, screen, with screening the lead time in diagnosis prolongs survival, even if death is not, uh, it prolongs your uh, uh, the survival, even, even if the death is uh, delayed or not delayed. This is your lead time bias what we call it here. It is the backward shift in the starting point for the measurement of survival as a result of early detections. For, for patients who di were diagnosed earlier, they seem can seem to live longer uh, even after diagnosis, even if the time they have, uh, they died does not, uh, that is their end point, the time of death does not change. The Because of this uh, lead time bias, you know, a uh, 5 year survival rates are higher for early cancer, stage cancer than for advanced cancer stage that who patients who are screened benefit from the screen they they benefit from the screening and live or longer uh, maybe it is just that uh, fact that it may it is like uh, the dis disease is detected earlier the tendon the tendency of the screening technology to detect smaller localized tumors proves that can cancers are are being found at an earlier stage of their progression but not that the, also it is not like suppose I have detected the cancer very early, it is not that the outcome of the pro, uh, of that progression will be necessarily be altered. This is your lead time bias. One more terminology which we will be using here is your length weighted sampling which refers to the fact that the chance of the screen detection is dependent on the length of the time. For example, recollect your earlier uh, figure where the cancer remains in phase B. Here the cancer, the indolent cancer which is really not very active it becomes and this is your aggressive uh, cancer and uh, because of that uh, detect screening maybe for example which is detectable and your symptoms and because of di uh, your uh, uh, time you know so it is uh, detected uh, and the di symptoms and diagnosis it is detected and then de death is prolonged or, or that is different. But whereas, whereas for an aggressive cancer, even though it is, you know, it can't be detected during because it's already, it would have shown up symptoms, it could, could not be detectable at the screening stage or maybe it was like with an individual approach. So, then it is like the patient screening tends to, be, your screening is more helpful for uh, detect more, uh, less aggressive more ca less aggressive cancers and it can be more beneficial in those terms. Here patients diagnosed earlier can seem to live longer after diagnosis even if the time that uh, they die does not change. 
because of leap time bias, a five time five year survival rates are higher for early cancer, uh, for early stage cancer than for advanced stage cancer which by itself does not prove that patients who are screened earlier that they who are screened they benefit from that screening and they live longer only it may mean it's like uh, mean that the disease is detected earlier that's it but the progression of this uh, cancer may not be really altered just because the cancer was detected earlier the tendency to detect smaller localized tumors proves that cancers are being that are being found at an earlier stage of their progression it, uh, it may not mean that the, the progression outcomes may be altered so keep in mind the detection and the progression of uh, the cancer or the tumor is entirely dependent uh, functions. Now next comes to your uh, lightweight sampling which refers to the fact that the chance of cancer detection is dependent on the length of the time the cancer remains in your phase B. It refers to the tendency of the screening test to detect cancers that take longer to become symptomatic. Therefore, the more dull you know more therefore more slow growing can cancers. They, they have the they have the tendency to become symptomatic only in the later stages. Not all cancers they have the same behavior. Some are very aggressive while some grow more slowly. They are slowly those which are growing at slowly you know they are easily easy to detect because they have a longer pre symptomatic period of time when they are only many of your screening technologies for example they are all like uh, detected here. So, thus the screening test detects more slow growing technologies. So, thus the survival in patients with screen detected cancers is longer in part because the maybe perhaps one of the reason is like your screen detected cancers are more uh, it could be they are more uh, they are less aggressive or they, they can uh, the improved survival cannot be uh, totally uh, it could be uh, uh, totally attributed to the early treatment and then a better outcome clinical outcome or it may not even be attributed that this is what we called your length bias also. Now coming to over diagnosis what is over diagnosis is the detection through cancer screening of cancers that never would have been diagnosis diagnosed in the absence of cancer screening. They could be very small tumors, they could be continued to be only in very um, very low at uh, dull stage or inactive stage. That is like you go for uh, you end up uh, diagnosis end up uh, diagnosing uh, for cancers that never would have been diagnosed at all. For example, there was no intention to detect but it does not mean that you totally do not undertake a screening program. These are cancers that in the absence of screening would not progress beyond phase B. Recollect our earlier talk during the lifetime of the screening. The existence of uh, uh, for example, this particular uh, over diagnosis was once quite controversial because you know now they are uh, some some nowadays many people are coming are writing to the open mind that some screen detected ca uh, cancers may not are di are not uh, are diagnosed unnecessarily. So maybe it because of this over, over, over diagnosis. Over diagnosis is basically an extreme form of form of your length bi bias in which a screening test detects. For example, here you know it detects a lung cancer that is really not or a pseudo disease is a cancer you but it is it is like the it is a pseudo disease a cancer which people die with and it is not which they die with this particular cancer but not from this cancer so it may look like a cancer and to the under the microscope but it could not be not be it could not have been really potential. When a screening test detects such a cancer, maybe we think uh, could they be uh, the, we are treating the patient very successfully, making the highlighting the screening test to be very effective when in fact you know something the something maybe the screening test could have really not detected something a really aggressive cancer. Maybe that particular tumor could have been totally highly non non lethal. This is all for example cases. We really do not know. This is one more term which we would like to have to pay attention is about your uh, over diagnosis biased and your pseudo disease. Now for example, how just, just this slide. So now first how do you, what are the different elements of your organized cancer screening for, for uh, cancer detection. 
for example you want to bring it as a typical policy or how do you want to have a perfect deliverable you know what are the different uh, this things first you have your leadership governance and your comp very very important is your funding financing for your cancer screening this mostly happens in your western where you know a policy framework exists that describes the we here it, it, there is a complete policy framework which describes the your government your governance structure your program objectives for example your cervical cancer screening this many age women or this particular area so you have your defined uh, objectives and then definitely it is very very important to have your financial funding resource and then uh, do you have any of your is this an evidence based protocol or is it a guideline that is universally complied with yeah mostly whatever uh, the universally compliant uh, gu guidelines are uh, really adhered to how do you go for then how do you have do you have a team do you have a hierarchy structural team for implementation and coordination this of this particular screens for example you want to screen say 20000 women in this particular region or in this whole of state of tamil nadu or however it is do you have a proper program guidelines and implementations and well coordination and very very important this thing is uh, you need to have health workers you know when when then and uh, uh, you need to have train this particular service providers because they have to really uh, you know counsel the women to be part of this particular for example their women could be you know, totally from rural backgrounds they could be highly uneducated so now how do you so does do these uh, do you have to it's a very very important and that too in their local languages also it had the, this particular healthcare workers have to totally communicate if the if they are going to approaching in a, a rural sector or in a in a very low income uh, low income country group so now do this have access to your external services such as your Uh, you need to have uh, adequate uh, infrastructure for example your uh, uh, electricity or whatever you need to have a simple healthcare or maybe even a small uh, healthcare unit do you need to have a provision is there for pop population education to improve uh, awareness this is very very important part so you have to improve the to uh, awareness you know so for example so and it should be there should be equity to access to screening of diagnosis and treat, treatment services we cannot say that only some people enter or no it should be uh, totally uh, accessible to all so for example whenever it's an organized cancer screening so now first then we have you have to identify the uh, target uh, population so you will be uh, invite the inviting and recalling those requiring further so whoever is you have to enroll them in this particular screening program and then uh, uh, so you have to make a provision for uh, improving the awareness in that particular uh, uh, region they have to have an informed choice so and then you have to assure for that then you will after you invite them then Uh, for informed choice of only the uh, to notify the result and inform only if positive so so a robust health system with a uh, appropriate legal framework it should exist so that it is capable of implementing in uh, invitation and call recall and also capture a uh it has to take up all this particular programs has to take up the data uh, for uh, program evaluation full uh, full respect to very very important part is your privacy legalization and ethics and uh, it's a very ethical uh, concerns then and then uh, that and you don't want to have like uh, so people uh, leaving your uh, study in uh, between or like you know or uh, recall them then information and uh, system and quality assurance should serve to to uh, should have a system to identify cancer occurrence and the quality improvement framework firm with a responsible team should be available uh, you should uh, this program should be evaluated with its own quality indicators and reference reference standards on your regular when i say this program evaluation you evaluate your screening test how uh, is this particular is it very specific are the health uh, workers or whoever are uh, helping the particular target population take up the screen test are they taking up the quality are they following with the uh, following the quality uh, compliances so that the test you don't report any false positives and false negatives
A policy curriculum from the implement uh, organization which may be governmental or non-governmental, it defines the, it should define the financial support, governance structure, goals and objectives of the screening program to guide implementation and evaluation. So, such training can be provided by the program or other stakeholders and it should be regularly monitored. The, it should, the legal framework uh, is a mandate, you know, uh, to the appropriate, you need to protect the data protection safeguards and recognize a ba balance between uh, fundamental rights of privacy and uh, and the access to health care. So, to clear defined balance has to be maintained. So, the uh, regulation of the personal data, safety, cancer screening, uh, registration and the linkage between the screening related data and other uh, data, uh, relevant data sources is necessary. It is, uh, it is very, very important to maintain for the cancer screening. Uh, management so that your uh, national can cancer portals they can really access so for example they can whatever if you make for the look at the graphs what I have shown in the first things you know only such uh, registries can national cancer registries have to really access this particular data so the cost versus lives yes it is of course the life is more precious but you have uh, there is an increase in health service cost a patient out of pocket cost so there is a societal cost now slowly we will now drift from the cancer screening terminology to a cancer detection where we talk about here biomarkers. So now what is exactly biomarkers? Biomarkers they are defined as a characteristic that has objectively measured and evaluated as an indicator of a normal biological process or a pathological process or a pharmacological response to a therapeutic interventions. These can be measured by your macromolecules such as your DNA, RNA, proteins or by cells or by processes, you know, for example, that describe a normal or abnormal biological state in an organism. Now, the different uh, biomarkers uh, here uh, is like, you know, very general here I am talking maybe, but all in detail we will be taking forward in your next session. Here your tumor size where you know for example uh, it may not have uh, if there is uh, if there is an is this does it have an analytical validity no but uh, there are uh, numericals uh, trials which qualifies it uh, even though they are in instance that on uh, tumor shrinkage and clinical benefit so for uh, current data does not support it's used as a surrogate endpoint then your c-reactive pro protein which is has a uh, where many high sensitivity tests are available, RCTs and observational studies are available. So, coming back to the real, one of the very important detection methods for cancer is your molecular diagnostics, where uh, you have your, it is an application of molecular biology techniques uh, for uh, diagnostic prognostics or for therapeutic versus in uh, molecular uh, for oncology. There are uh, major, uh, several major uh, uh, avenues in cancer medicine which utilize molecular based uh, uh, testing. For example, testing for your uh, hereditary cancer sy uh, syndromes. So, for example, there are a number of uh, uh, predictive tests involving either the analysis of individual drug targets or identification of specific tumor phenotypes which aid in the so choice of your uh, cancer drugs. So, monitoring of your uh, malignant disease can be achieved through molecular driven uh, detection of your residual uh, tumor fragments. It is anticipated that like liquid. Uh, now, you have your uh, what is called your, uh, for, so one, two more terms which we I have to introduce here is your FFP, um, FFP fresh pro, uh, frozen uh, biopsy ones and then your liquid biopsy which is your your blood which is which is a where a lot of this molecular diagnostics for cancer are moving in that direction and I will really tell everything in the detail in the next class. So, recent developing in your uh, tumor uh, uh, mutations uh, for example monitoring of your malignant uh, disease can be achieved to molecular uh, detection of your residual tumor uh, fragments. Now, recent is like uh, recent developments like your RNA analysis, uh, like your mutation testings and then your uh, uh, RNA analysis, they all offer 
proper uh, novel tools for diagnosis of uh, cancers of your unknown primary organ uh, origin when this uh, so you have something whenever this molecular diagnostics uh, is ap applied to uh, by the pathologist and then by the surgical people we have this uh, terms called such as molecular surgical pathology or molecular cytopathology all that will come into play so here you have the different uh, uh, predictive markers like your uh, molecular targets you can be like your head 2 egfr al cross see all this we will discuss in the coming uh, in detail in your coming session then you have the tumor phenotypes your mutation burden all of them they, they are the predictive markers you know which is, which are very 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 important uh, biomarkers during uh, the therapeutic uh, journey for the cancer uh, patients so like diagnostic tests for example you know uh, genetic tests are performed in ffp materials to confirm or exclude an inherited uh, origin of the cancer so they are the so called therapeutic pathology or like uh, personalized therapeutic test for uh, this is called personalized uh, therapy so cancer molecular tests usually are divided into mainly diagnostic genetic and the therapeutic so, because diagnostic tests are used because pathologists have difficulties in placing the right, uh, right uh, diagnostic label to the individual person. Now, the individual will no longer be only diagnostically categorized, but molecular categorization, which is very, very important. So, this is a very clear, important thing. So, this is a very con conventional pay, uh, therapy where you have patients where you had therapy, then they benefit, some do not benefit and some succumb or had adverse effects. Whereas here, you know, in the personalized therapy, it is like a companion. Uh, this is here, you have your companion diagnostic te test. That is your molecular. You like, for example, you check for your driver mutations this uh, you check for your uh, driver mutation then and then for if i have this particular mutation then the therapy changes if there is no mutation the therapy is a little bit uh, different so then then you ensure that the patient benefits so for example your uh, tki inhibitors for your egfr positive uh, mutations for lung cancer patients that is like now the prototype uh, available in molecular diagnostic is like uh, you have the analysis for all your driver mutations or for your microsatellite in the instability for example in your case of your uh, hereditary non, non polypsis rectal cancer. For example, you know now to go back you know how can this molecular diagnosis really help you know how can the technology from the basic science you know for example in 1998 you know was uh, now so it is like more than uh, for in uh, 45 years after uh, the discovery of your DNA helix, you know, there uh, that particular director of the National Cancer Institute, he said, you know, it is like uh, the molecular analysis technologies have to classify tumors, which have to give the, the molecular classification has to be very, very informative for the patient, for the clinician to improve on the therapeutics. This is uh, this is the very ch ultimate challenge, and that is like you know you have your uh, basic science discoveries which have happened, and the bottleneck is like can how can the lack of technology or your lack lack of your robust research you know and the clinic uh, and they all like you know how do they really help in uh, giving a better I mean but how can you improve on all this particular bottlenecks you know to give a better output you know a better uh, better uh, improved clinical outcome you know the glass even though the for many cancer types even stores it still is glass empty but there, there is a lot this glass is empty actually this there is enough fluid to change the uh, you there is a lot of scope to change the, the traditional standard of care for cancer with many of the molecular information this how can this particular molecular information can be uh, in different uh, uh, scenarios has it been exploited to detect many cancer types so we, i will be discussing it in the next session we will talk about in the next session the molecular technologies for cancer detection and cancer detection methods for different uh, tumors so thanks a lot thank you